Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got some good news. As you regulars would have remembered, we keep um, the giant spiny assassin bugs, the horridors, and the white spot assassin, assassin bugs. Now, we wasn't having very much luck on the breeding size of these things, and they were absolutely driving me nuts. To the point where I just was on the point of just throwing the towel in because it just wasn't working. And we've tried so many different things to get these guys to work. Now, um, as you remember, I took some advice from Steve Thornton from um, Tarantula Tastic Enclosures. Go out and check his channel out. It's an amazing channel. Does some really, really cool stuff. Lovely, lovely builds he makes there. Now, he helped me out and told me how he done his. Um, and I basically copied what he's done. And to say it's worked would be an understatement. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you now quickly how we've done this. He keeps his in these, these uh, small tanks here. I've always kept mine in larger tanks, and um, which is a little bit unusual for me because I tend to keep things in smaller things because it's much better to maintain. and they often benefit from it. With these guys, because they're so active, I always thought they needed more space. But um, I think that was maybe a downside. And I also kept them arboreally. Now I keep them terrestrially, and things have changed so much. Everything's working really, really well. So we've got um, our white spots in this one, and our horridors in this one. Now if you'd like to come over and have a quick look, I'll show you the simple setups. They're both kept pretty much the same. And as you'll see in the enclosures here, they're kept on a dry substrate there. And we have a cricket pot in there. Well, that's a deli cup in there. And what we do is we keep damp um, potting compost in there with a little bit of beastie substrate mixed in. And this is where they're laying their eggs and they're hatching out. And there is actually a couple of babies in there as we speak. And um, what we can do is we can have a little look very very simple enclosure here are the adults oh look there's a baby there tiny tiny little baby there and you notice how these will cohabit oh there's another baby under there look that was hiding underneath one of the adults these white spots really are very very pretty and so they're actually coming out of here this is where the, the eggs are hatched. They hatch down in there and then they come out into the enclosure. And once they come into the enclosure, we then catch them up and move them to a different enclosure. There's a couple more babies in there. You'll also notice there's some eggs on the floor. This is an egg. That's an egg there. That's one of the eggs. They obviously haven't got the idea that they lay in the pot. Some of them obviously are, but they're still laying on the outside, which is an interesting thing. It's something we'll have to look into. So that's them guys there. Now don't forget, if you keep these, when you do clean them out, you wanna keep all of this substrate and work your way through it and pull all the eggs out of it and then incubate the eggs yourself. And I'll show you for why very, very soon. We move over to the Horridors. This is the giant spiny assassin bug. This is the largest assassin bug. Now these guys were the ones that I was really, really struggling with. And I just could not breed them for love nor money. But we have cracked it now, thanks to Steve's help. And what we got here, this is a piece here. Look at all these babies, man, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Now these are kept exactly the same way. They go into the cricket tub here, which has got the um, the damp substrate in it. And this is where they're laying their eggs. But look, they're also laying them on the outside as well. That's actually an empty one. That's a hatched one. There's more there. There's loads of them. They're laying everywhere. But the majority of them are actually laying inside here, which is where we want them. 
Now, I don't know if I can do this, but it seems like all the adults are hiding. You do have to watch your fingers a little bit with these guys. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we've got any more under here. Let's have a look. What have we got? Camera loading. Oh my god, look at that. Notice how they're all cohabiting together. I think we have success. Isn't that a wonderful sight? Absolutely amazing. Look at that. You notice how the adults are all sitting in the bottom here? An incredible communal beastie, these. They're everywhere. Look at them all. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to... My God, they're everywhere. So what, what we're going to do... We're not going to try and get these off now because it actually takes a little bit of time to catch these and move them into their nursery pots. So we will do that off camera. But what I will show you, isn't that an amazing sight? That is just wonderful, isn't it? What I will show you now is something we've done earlier on. Now these, these in here, this is our nursery pot. And basically, all it, all it is, is a simple deli cup with a piece of bark in it, no substrate. You notice there's no substrate in here. There is nothing in the bottom of this. And this is because they are the messiest little devils going. But as you can see there, this is all our babies. You can see where they've all got nice fat abdomens. Now these guys at this size are taking on small crickets we also give them um, large fruit flies. You can see this one's quite a bit bigger than the others. This is, he's quite a bit older, that one. So this is the simple nursery that we use for these. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, how on earth do you clean these out? I'm going to show you. It's so simple. As you can see on here, you pick up that piece of bark and you can see all our babies are on it. They won't cause you any harm at this age. I turn it round and you can see there is babies everywhere. They are all over it. And all we do is we take this and put that in a brand new pot, lay it down nice and gently. And that is it. We've cleaned them out. We've put our lid on. And you'll see there, all the muck and everything in the bottom there. That's all gone now. So we can literally tip that out. We just tip it away. We get a little brush. A little white brown, and that's clean. So now... We can pick that up again. You notice they all stay on the bark. Tick it up. We've got our label so we know who we've got. Because the horrida babies look very similar to the white spot babies. And that is it. And now you have a nice clean enclosure. And we can carry on feeding. Very, very simple. Now... We can give these guys here, these can actually have a few crickets. You literally just shake a few in. Don't need a lot. Because these guys, shall I put that up there? These guys, once they catch them, you can see there's one caught one there, you got one. One round the back here. He's caught that, look at that. That cricket's as large as he is. And they will all share. They'll all dive in and they'll share for the same meal. They are ferocious feeders. Absolutely ferocious. We've got more here. These are all horridas as well. So as you can see, we've been rather, rather productive with the horridas. Now you think they're good. 
Have a look at this. Now you'd remember me saying earlier on that when you clean them out, you want to go through the substrate and pick up all your eggs and incubate them yourself. Look at that. Now, these are all the eggs from the white spots that we picked up before we rehoused them. And we collected them all up out of the substrate and we popped them all in this pot. Now, you'll see in there that this is actually quite damp and this is to help um, incubate and get the eggs to hatch because as long as they stay dry, they won't hatch. So they need the moisture to actually hatch. Very much like stick insects. So we collected all the eggs up, plonked them all in here. Now we have already had probably half of these hatch in a, in a previous, I think last week, and we've already taken them out. So we've got loads. So what we do now, now we've hatched them all, you may think to yourself, what do we do with them now? We set up another little nursery. So it's a simple deli cup, one piece of bark, nothing else. That is all we require. And then we have the fun part of trying to get them in. So this is how we do this. And you don't need to be worrying too much. Although they are delicate, they're fairly strong as well. Now, once these guys hatch, they do actually like it quite dry. So what we do, we literally just flick them over. If you don't mind getting off my paintbrush. And this is all we do, we literally just walk them out. Off you go. As you can see, there's a fair number of them here. Lots of them. So when they're babies like this, they actually like it really dry. That's what we found but they need the moisture to hatch. So in the wild state, wherever that egg is, it would have got some moisture to it. That would have triggered it into growing and then ultimately hatching. But then once it's hatched, that tiny little nymph then has the ability to walk away and find a dry environment. What we do takes a little bit of time. Move them around so they've got a bit of dry stuff. We literally just sweep them out. And they just fall into there. Alright, as you can see, this will take a little bit of time. So what we're gonna do. We're going to fast forward. Once we've got them into there, we want to give them their first feed. And what I've got here, these are the um, the, the micro um, fruit fly. As you can see, this one on my hand, this is a large fruit fly. He's quite a big one. And these are the tiny, tiny ones. And if you can see them, they're very, very small. So what we do for the first feed, we literally just drop a few of them in, not too many, they don't need a great deal. And this will give them their first feed. And once they start putting on a little bit of size and we then move them up to the larger fruit fly, these in actual fact will take on a large fruit fly. They'll have no problems with them at all. And that is pretty much it. That is the, sim the simplest way of keeping these guys. 
and what we found to be the most effective. And um, we're having some really, really good success at the moment. Also note in here as well that we have no air holes in this. So this is a sealed unit, if you like. Um, but because we're opening it up every, I don't know, probably every three days we're feeding these, we're throwing fruit fly in there. That's giving us an exchange of air, which is more than enough. So what we're going to do now to wrap this up a little bit, I think that's explained how we've managed to do this. And our, our heartfelt thanks to uh, Steve Thornton. Without his help, I think I'd still be scratching my head and uh, banging my head against the wall. So uh, <laughs> thank you for your help, Steve. It's obviously paid off. It's worked really, really well. And what we're going to do now is um, we're going to get Camera Lady to feed these horridors and um, show you just how much fun they really are. Because you can hand feed these and they are super, super cool. So uh, sit back and enjoy this. All right, here we go. This is one of the best parts of keeping the assassin bugs. Now this is the, the giant spiny assassin bug, the Horrida. And as you can see there, you can see the spines all coming out of the carapace and everything else. Look at that little baby, sneaking up to have a look. These will often join the adults at feeding times. You can see they're everywhere. Now when we do feed these guys, it tends to be an absolute free-for-all with the adults. You see that one, that literally jumped up to grab the, grab the roach. We can feed these all sorts of things. Roaches, um, crickets, cowsy worms, anything really. They will take on almost anything. Look at that, that's absolute free-for-all. There's babies in the middle of all of that. You notice how the babies are quite robust. They get knocked about all over the place at feed times, and it doesn't seem to be any problem to them at all. They're very quick to get out of the way. You see them guys are arguing over there one. Here comes another. They are savage. Absolutely savage. All that fighting and they both lost it. All the babies look, they're all, they're all creeping in. Where's the food, Mum? Look at that. Look at the colouring on these guys. These are an absolutely lovely black and red. As you'll see there, they are actually winged. Although it's very, very rare to see one of these take to the wing. I don't think I've ever seen one fly, to be honest. But they don't get their wings until they reach their, their absolute adulthood. A nice close up there. Stunning, stunning little beast is these. Now they do have a rather large appetite, which also means that there's a lot of carcasses left over when they've finished feeding. So once a week, we just get in and we remove all the carcasses, pick them up, they're all dried up, and we literally just remove them. And this keeps down any sort of, um, any nasties that we might get through um, bad food and things like that. But because we're feeding these insects, the roaches and the crickets and things like that, they tend to dry out very, very quickly. So they carry them around. You can see the proboscis on that. Huge, great stabbing implement. Fabulous things. Absolutely fabulous. A must have for any collection. Now we've moved over now and we're doing the, um, the twin white spot for obvious names. Now you can see there, look at that, it's absolutely velvet black with the yellow bands on the legs. You'll also see that these guys are 
slightly smaller than the, the giant spiny, they're a very robust um, assassin bug. They're measuring out at almost two inches, whereas these um, white spots are quite dainty in their build. They're very, very small in comparison. And I say these guys, are, as an adult, run out around about an inch, inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half if you've got a real big one. But they are just as ferocious. Very, very beautiful bugs, these ones. What a lovely contrast, the white spots on that jet black. You see the babies creeping in there on the sides. Gorgeous. A very clear shot of the proboscis there. And you can see how they use that as a stabbing implement. And they will use that to drain the fluids from their food. Beautiful things. Look at that. Their antenna constantly flicking away. Amazing. Right, well I hope you enjoyed that um, that little close-up feeding clip there. And as you can see, these guys are really full on when it comes to food time. Dinner time's a big hit with these guys. And you'll see actually where the little ones, although they stand on the outsides, they're looking in all the time. And once that roach is dead, quite often they will move in and they'll, they'll feed as well. And the, and the adults will allow them to do this. So you can keep these in a lovely group and they are very, very entertaining. And as you saw there, with the, the ferocity of their feeding, this is one of camera ladies' favorite jobs is hand feeding these guys. She does enjoy these, along with catching slings. But this is, um, this is a real, real fun beastie to keep. They're well worth it. So if anyone's interested in any, as you can see, we have plenty, plenty. Right then, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Just a little recap on on um, how we're doing these and how we're looking after them and, and the obvious success, success that we've managed to, to gain through this. But the most important thing is we've managed to gain this success through the help of others in the hobby. And this is very important. Share what you know and then everyone gets to enjoy it. Well, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your little beasties. See you soon, guys.